on World News Tonight. Dramatic development. Former Vice President Pence testifies to federal grand jury investigating Donald Trump and January 6. Climate calamity. Fears over wildfires rise as unseasonal high temperature hits the world. Coronation prep. UK's Charles presents a new standards and colours as Britain's anti-monarchist movement take the street. Celebrating companionship. Man's best friend have their noses in the air flaunting their fluffiness. This is Adha Derana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. Good evening and you are watching World News. Tonight we have news from neighbouring India. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh chairs the Shanghai Cooperation Organisation or the SEO. Defence Ministers met with fellow member nations in New Delhi with Iran and Belarus participating as observer countries. The SEO is a eight-member political and security bloc that includes Russia and China. Singh hosted bilateral talks with Defence Ministers of China, Iran, Kazakhstan and Tajikistan ahead of the Defence Minister's concave. The meeting between Singh and China's Li Shangfu was the first between the defence ministers of the two countries since September 2020 when they held talks on the sideline of SEO meeting in Moscow. It was also the first visit by Chinese defence minister to India since the violence in the Himalayas began in May 2020. Singh is scheduled to hold talks with Russian defence minister Army General Sergei Soju on the sidelines of the SEO meet. According to the UN, 18 million people are in need of help in Myanmar and hundreds of thousands of them have fled the country. Myanmar is a strategically important country but the world doesn't seem to be paying much attention as the disaster continues. Recently, the missing camera of slain Japanese journalist has surfaced after 15 years showing the final moments before he was killed. These are the last images just released of a journalist who was trying to spotlight a ruthless military crackdown. The army has arrived, Kenji Nagai says, and they are heavily armed. Within minutes, he'd be shot dead. Nagai filming his own report in front of protesters in Myanmar, a selfie-style narration to camera just moments before he was hit by a bullet. This now famous picture shows how he fell right where he was filming, still holding his camera despite the fatal wound, standing over him, a soldier with a gun. <laughs> they are images from 2007, during the height of an uprising against Myanmar's military junta, called the Saffron Revolution after the colour of the monks' robes who were central to the movement. Many died, and today many more are still dying, under the shadow of military rule, in a country riven by a complex conflict, the world seems powerless to end. By one estimate, 30,000 lives have been lost this past two years. The family of Kenji Nagai, who was Japanese, were given his camera and released the chilling images, hoping to refocus world attention on the bloodshed just as he was trying to do. <laughs> Authorities in Myanmar maintain he was killed by a stray bullet, but Japanese media obtained footage showing him pushed to the ground and shot at point-blank range. The picture of him wounded with his camera won a Pulitzer Prize in 2008. Now the world can see what he was doing minutes before. <laughs> New evidence from the hands of a journalist killed during his job, determined to highlight the brutality of Myanmar's junta, not knowing that same violence would soon take his life. Former Vice President Mike Pence testified to a federal grand jury investigating the aftermath of the 2020 election and the actions of then-President Donald Trump and others. It is believed that Pence has direct knowledge of Trump's efforts to block the certification 2020 election. Pence's testimony legally pits him against the man who could very well be a rival for the 2024 Republican nomination. Former U.S. Vice President Mike Pence appeared before grand jury probing former President Donald Trump's role in efforts to overturn the 2020 election. About American justice. Multiple black SUVs with black tinted windows were seen leaving the Washington Federal Courthouse parking garage. Security was beefed up more than usual at the courthouse and a bomb sniffing dog was spotted in the hallway. Representatives for Pence had no comment. 
Earlier this month, Pence disclosed he would not appeal a judge's order for him to testify to the federal grand jury about conversations he had with Trump leading up to the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol on January 6, 2021. During those conversations, Trump repeatedly lambasted Pence for refusing to try to prevent Congress from certifying Joe Biden's win. On Wednesday, Trump lost his appeal to block Pence from testifying in the special counsel investigation, according to CNN. Trump, who is running for president in 2024, faces a slew of other legal challenges, including a separate special counsel investigation into his handling of classified documents and a probe in Georgia related to alleged interference with the state's 2020 election. A civil trial is currently underway over rape accusations against the former president by writer E. Jean Carroll. While the scorching heat in parts of Europe may delight tourists, the unseasonal temperatures are raising fears of a repeat wildfire season from last year. France is preparing its wildfire fighting troops and its water-carrying aircrafts a month earlier than usual. Unseasonable heat is hitting parts of Europe, which came as a surprise to these tourists in Lisbon on Thursday. While visitors may be enjoying the sun, the high temperatures are raising fears that wildfires could start early, as they did last year when over 1.9 million acres were destroyed across Europe. That's more than double the annual average for the past 16 years. Adding to the concern, an unusually dry winter that reduced moisture in the soil. France is preparing its wildfire fighting troops and its water carrying aircraft a month earlier than usual. This general inspector of France's civil security said the conditions are a clear sign of climate change. In Spain, residents are living through a drought that has seen 36 consecutive months of below average rainfall. A cistern truck has been delivering drinking water for over a week to about 80,000 people in the country's south. Their local reservoir has dried out and the alternative dam is unsuitable for human consumption. Reservoirs in Spain are at 50 percent of their capacity, with some in the northeastern and southern regions at 25 percent. Residents say they feel helpless and are afraid of what will happen come summer. When King Charles is crowned in a lavish ceremony next week, Britain's main anti-monarchist movement will gather along the procession route next to the statue of the last British monarch outstarted in favour of a short-lived republic in the 17th century. This comes as King Charles presents new standards and colours that will be carried at coronation. Supporters of the Republic, a group founded in 1983 that campaigns for an elected head of state, planned their biggest ever protest, believing Charles' accession to the throne presents their best chance of ending the monarchy, which traces its history back more than a thousand years. Polls show Charles is less popular than his mother, Queen Elizabeth, the world's second longest reigning monarch, whose death last year marked the end of an era in Britain. Smith said the public's respect for the Queen meant that she had been an obstacle to the Republican cause. This comes as His Majesty the King, head of armed forces accompanied by Her Majesty the Queen Consort, presented new standards and colours to the Royal Navy, the Life Guards of House Cavalry Mounted Regiment, the King's Company of the Grenadier Guards and the King's Colour Squadron of the Royal Air Force at Buckingham Palace. The parade was in the quadrangle and garden of Buckingham Palace and marks the first colours presentation at which all three services of armed forces were represented. The four colours and standards consecrated will be seen during Their Majesties' coronation procession on Saturday, 6th May. Their Majesties were met by a royal salute and national anthem before the colours were blessed by the three service chaplains. The King then officially presented the new colours and gave a short speech. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. President Yoon received a security briefing at the U.S. Pentagon that the president also visited the key command and control center, a first for a South Korean president. This just a day after the adoption of the Washington Declaration, which ramps up Washington's defense commitments against North Korea. 
During his trip to Washington, South Korean President Yoon suk yeol also paid a visit to the Pentagon, where he received a briefing. The visit to the headquarters of National Security and the U.S. Armed Forces is being viewed as a move to underscore South Korea-U.S. combined defense readiness, coming a day after Yoon and Biden announced the Washington Declaration aimed at bolstering extended deterrence against North Korea's evolving threats. Yoon met with U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin and was given a briefing on the U.S. surveillance and crisis response system at the Pentagon's National Military Command Center, marking the first time that a South Korean president has visited the center. South Korea's first deputy director of the National Security Office, who is traveling with the president, described it as a key command and control center that directly assists the U.S. president and military commanders in times of emergency. During the talks, President Yoon reiterated the importance of the Washington Declaration, saying that he completely trusts U.S. pledges on extended deterrence. Secretary Austin pinpointed the ongoing challenges from North Korea, including the regime's missile testing program, adding that the determination of the U.S. to defend South Korea is strong. U.S. commitment to the defense of the ROK is ironclad, and so is our extended deterrence commitment to your country. Which includes a full range of U.S. defense capabilities, including conventional nuclear and missile defense capabilities. Meanwhile, Yoon also became the first foreign president to visit the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, which develops innovative technologies for combat and national security. There, he discussed how such a research environment can lead to technological innovations and measures to bolster bilateral cooperation on defense science and technology. Over 95% of malaria cases and deaths are in sub-Saharan Africa. There's a child dying every minute due to this disease. However, there is a worldwide push to completely wipe out the disease by 2030. The spa neighborhood near Libreville's prison is a malaria hotspot. Campaigners trying to raise awareness of how to prevent the deadly disease have started their cleanup campaign here. We urge the population to emulate the exercise we're carrying out today. They should do it every day. If we don't do it, our mothers or children will be exposed to malaria. Professor Atekbo is the Help Center Coordinator at the Mother and Child University Teaching Hospital in Libreville a pilot center which offers free testing for malaria. It also offers medical care for malaria to children up to five years old. This morning, Professor Ategbo is busy with consultations. Malaria is the primary cause for consultations in children. About 12% of children who come here have malaria. The important thing here and the message we're trying to convey is that malaria is dangerous, especially for children. After a rapid test, infected children are given ateminicin-based treatments. Ateminicin is a group of drugs used in the treatment of malaria. They are part of the national anti-malaria program. The goal is to eradicate malaria in Gabon by 2030. But to do that takes money. After a 15-year ban from receiving funding for the treatment of malaria, Gabon got a whooping 4 billion franc CFA from the World Health Organization to fight tuberculosis, HIV AIDS and malaria. In our country, malaria is one of the biggest expenses for hospitals. We have to invest money and resources if we want to achieve our 2030 goals. The National Program for the Fight Against Malaria has helped infection rates drop from 110 to 62 in every 1,000 inhabitants between 2019 and 2020. Sudan's army and a paramilitary force battled in Khartoum, testing U.S. and African efforts to pause a conflict that has turned residential areas into war zones and sent tens of thousands of people fleeing for their lives. Evacuations continue as the Sudanese generals agree to prolong the fragile ceasefire. These are some of around 2,700 people of various nationalities that Saudi Arabia says it's helped flee from Port Sudan. The fighting in Khartoum has somewhat eased during the ceasefire, and both the military, led by General Abdel Fattah Burhan, and the paramilitary Rapid Support Forces, led by General Mohammed Hamdan Dagalo, said late Thursday that they accepted an extension to this truce, allowing Sudanese and foreigners to continue to try and get to safer areas. 
Earlier this week, the RSF posted pictures on social media of its troops capturing the headquarters of the Army Reserve Forces. Food supplies in the capital are falling fast and 60% of pharmacies and medical centres are closed. A power outage has also led to water shortages in many neighbourhoods. Meanwhile, in the region of Darfur, the violence worsened on Thursday, with residents reporting armed fighters battling each other and looting shops and homes as the conflict approaches its third week. On an update on the Kenya cult that left many dead, a Kenyan pastor was arrested over the mass killing of his followers just days after a cult leader in the same region was detained, allegedly urging members to starve themselves to death. The head of a church in southeastern Kenya has been arrested in relation to mass killings and a hundred of his followers have been evacuated from church premises, Interior Minister Kitskure Kindiki said on Thursday. That this morning we have arrested Pastor Ezekiel Ombok Odero of the New Prayer Centre and Church at Mabueni in Kilifi County. On allegations of the deaths that have been occurring at his premises and reported in various uh, mocks or institutions, we've also taken action and closed down the prayer center. Odero's arrest and the closure of his church are separate from the case of the Good News International Church, a cult based in a forest in the same part of Kenya. At least 98 followers of the Good News International Church, which was based in the Shakaola Forest in eastern Kenya, are known to have died in recent days. The death amount to one of the worst cult-related tragedies in recent history, and the toll is expected to rise further, with the Kenyan Red Cross saying more than 300 people have been reported as missing. Welcome back. For more news, let's take care of the world in a minute. Crowds of travellers took to Shanghai's Hongqiao railway station as China braces for a record-high travel rush over the Labour holiday weekend. Authorities are expecting 19 million trips to be made across China's vast railway network. A Russian rocket attack destroyed an apartment block in Uman earlier today, leaving at least four dead and 17 wounded. Russian attack cities in a wide arc across Ukraine from the capital Kiev through central and southern regions. At least 11 people died and one was missing when a ferry capsized off the eastern coast of Indonesia, Sumantra Island. Locals were tending to survivors on the ground at Indagiri Hill after they were rescued out at sea. A Peruvian company that installs gas pipes under a 600-year-old funeral bundle with the remains of an ancient settler found during excavations in the neighborhood of capital Lima. It's one of the 1,700 archaeological remains the company has found in the past decade. Pope Francis left Rome on a three-day trip to Hungary, where the war in Ukraine, migration and Europe's Christian roots are expected to top the agenda in his public addresses and private talks with nationalist Prime Minister Viktor Orbán. That is all from us here at World News Tonight. Join us again on Monday as we keep you up to date with the latest from around the world. In case you miss any of the stories tonight, you can watch the whole program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We leave you tonight with the dog owners and trainers preparing themselves for the 147th Westminster Dog Show. Thank you and good night.